I was left a bit adrift after my episode on the 2003 Hulk game. I wanted to get another video in before October rolls around, but I needed something reliably short to make sure I'd be done in time to get two Halloween titles in. So when a viewer informed me of an FMV game on the PlayStation 4 called The Bunker, directly comparing it to prior review subjects Erica and I Saw Black Clouds, SALT! <laughs> Full motion video, or FMV games using live action cutscenes, have been making a bit of a comeback on modern consoles, but newer FMV titles don't seem to have much patience for that whole game aspect. Erica not only expected you to download a barely working app on your phone to perform basic inputs, it was a super pretentious tale about a cult at an asylum that railroads its story into playing out exactly the damn same no matter what you do. It cuts off with no resolution if you try to stray from the main ending, is actually impossible to die, and it has loads of logic problems and inconsistencies pointing to a major twist that never freaking happens. I also played I Saw Black Clouds, a game about a woman investigating either a ghost or an organ harvesting ring, where your choices don't do squat to affect the game, only they do, because the game is somehow psychologically profiling you on every arbitrary choice, and the story cuts off without a resolution because it was the therapy dream of a trauma victim. Modern FMV games are starting to feel more like movies that got turned down by all the streaming platforms, so they threw in a few button prompts and tried hitting consoles instead. Will the bunker play like an actual game this time? Only one way to find out. The game opens in 1986, where Britain is at war with... someone. And a nuclear bomb is dropped on the city of... unspecified Shire. Government employees are rushed into underground nuclear bunkers, including a pregnant nurse giving birth as the bombs drop. Thirty years later, the mom kicks the bucket and the baby's grown up into John, our main character who is now the bunker's lone survivor, having spent most of his life isolated to one floor of the bunker because everyone else died long ago and his mom insists it's the only safe place. The first bit of actual interactivity the game has is just clicking through John's daily routine. Take vitamins, test his radiation exposure, check the radio and find nothing, eat beans and shit, and read to the dead body of his mom. It's an effective opening conveying the isolation, hopelessness, boredom, and yet strange comfort and security of John's day-to-day -day life. I think this is what David Cage is going for when he has you doing chores for half an hour at the start of his games. Don't worry, we'll get there eventually. One day, John's radiation level starts rising and the computer that checks the equipment stops working, forcing him to finally explore the abandoned bunker to fix the equipment that's keeping him alive and to finally confront the fears that have dominated him his entire adult life. Alright, now that I say it out loud, I realize this is a video game about a guy running tech support to troubleshoot his computer. Not the most compelling story hook, but maybe the place is haunted or has a monster or something. I mean, the game's preview image has a masked killer with an axe, maybe a psycho is broken in to kill you. Something has to happen eventually. The Bunker plays as a point-and-click adventure game where you move a cursor across the screen and click things in the environment to move around and inspect different areas and items. Except doing all this with a control stick kind of blows chunks. The default cursor sensitivity is slow as all hell, and not only are the icons that you need to click minuscule, they also don't appear until your cursor has directly drifted over them. You get to a new screen and you'll never know at a glance what's clickable. Often stuff that looks plainly obvious to interact with doesn't actually do anything. You can go to a sick bay but can't pick up any tools for an inventory. Also, side note, you have no inventory. And sometimes stuff that you can click on has absolutely nothing in the shot to imply that anything's there. So it quickly becomes a thing that every time you enter a new room, you slowly sweep the cursor back and forth over the entire screen looking for hotspots. Methinks this was designed to be played on computers, especially since you only use one button. Actually, that's not right. You do press the triangle button to open an inventory of little wooden peg people that John made as toys. These are your collectibles. They do nothing. The first puzzle of the game is to find a key to unlock the door to the main staircase so that you can access the other floors. You can go into John's room and there's nothing in there. You can go to the storeroom where all the food is kept in the bathroom. Don't Seems like a poor choice. And there's nothing in there except this. I don't need the toilet right now. There's a sick bay that has nothing in it except for a chart of someone who died of radiation poisoning next to a pool of blood and a locked emergency door, so that just leaves the mom's room and its three drawers, two of which don't have shit, and one of which has the key. So this opening area has four rooms with over a dozen things to click, and precisely one hotspot in one room actually does something. The 
hell is the point of the other three rooms then? This feels less like a puzzle and more like a scavenger hunt for the one button that works. The game does a pretty good job of atmosphere and sucking you into the bleakness of the setting. The visuals have a grit that adds uneasiness to the experience, especially when the game periodically shows you through crappy security camera footage to make you uneasy that you're being watched and to emphasize just how old, broken down, and unreliable the environment is. The bunker is so unreliable that one of the cameras is labeled for the wrong floor! The environments in color grading are all a drab beige as though all life and joy have been sucked out of the place and a sickly yellow to evoke disease, the only somewhat bright area being John's room to indicate that it's your refuge, and a lot of the items that you can interact with have chilling world-building exposition on the state of this world. The second level is some kind of office area lined with computers where you find by clicking around that other bunkers fell into chaos and lost contact many years ago. There are recordings of people desperately searching for loved ones, and documents of people starting to realize that they're going to be stuck down there for a long time and beginning to panic. The game is also loaded with flashbacks to John's childhood, the first of which has the commissioner being told they only have 14 months worth of food left, and we see people begin dying from radiation poisoning from an unknown source, which induces more panic, and John's got a front row seat to all of it because his mom is a nurse and critical staff, and everything's being covered up by the mean commissioner who's trying to keep order. It all sets up a dark, oppressive, and hopeless atmosphere that's fairly immersive and engaging. But that's all storytelling! What do you do for the actual gameplay? To beat level 2, you have to fix a fuse box, and you're given rock-simple instructions that John will remind you of constantly while preventing you from doing any of the steps out of order. You have to make an announcement on the PA system for all the zero people alive to hear the notice, you have to find the replacement fuse, shut off the power, replace the fuse, and turn the power back on. My problem, and you may chalk this up to my own stupidity, was I couldn't find the damn spare fuse! Three times I checked over both rooms of the computer office, I checked the commissioner's office, I checked the meeting room, I even backtracked upstairs to see if there was something new in the storeroom or if Ma had the fuse tucked in the drawer that John said was empty. I didn't find squat! I also tried going down to level 3, but, and I am not making this up, you're not allowed to go down there because John is too afraid of the stairs. Brilliant hero here, people. Although if he played Infernal Machine, I sympathize. You want to know where the damn spare fuse is? In the plainly obvious box inches away from where you'd need to use it. How I missed that giant clickable item, I will never know. These damn hotspots are crap! So again, level 2 consists of about 6 screens and rooms, and there are precisely 2 things that you actually need to interact with. Everything else, from a gameplay perspective, ONLY THERE TO WASTE YOUR TIME! What's funny is that every time you're looking at a document, you can press the square button to have the document's text appear on the screen in plain typeface. Because Lord knows you'd have trouble reading this plainly written English unless you have the words written a second time on top of it. And most of the time, the game just reads the text to you anyway. But significantly less funny is that if you don't press square on every single last individual document, the game screws you out of the achievement for getting all the documents. Which you'll probably lose anyway because the clickable hotspots are colored so badly that some are damn near impossible to see! John runs back to his room to check his computer and finds out there's a radiation leak in the air filtration. So he needs to track down a radiation suit on level 3, the War Room. I'd ask why the hell this place has a war room when it's not like anybody was directing any forces from here, but apparently this was shot on location in a real-life nuclear bunker in Britain, so the hell do I know? MOVE IT, SISSY pants! Here you see a flashback of the doctor revealing that he can't find any source of the radiation poisoning, so he suspects that there's a killer loose in the base. Well, gee, someone's poisoning the other residents. A grand total of two people survived long after everyone else, and one of those two was a child. The other was a nurse. Give you three guesses what the big twist of the game turns out to be. They throw in some red herrings as John starts having out-of-nowhere flashes of the killer from My Bloody Valentine, Cause yeah, I'm sure the guy with the axe is killing people with radiation poisoning! Anyway, you wanna know how you beat this level? Click to the side to walk back, open the one door that's available, and get the radiation suit! There wasn't even a puzzle that time! It was literally just walk into a room and win! 
So then John goes down to level 4 to fix the air filtration system and this part shouldn't be a puzzle, but it is because of stupid ass game design. It's plainly obvious to anyone with a brain that you need to shut off the steam with the shut off valve off to the right, but you can't. For no apparent reason you just can't select the valve because first you need to go into this side room and operate the computer so that it tells John that he needs to operate the valve. And even that I had trouble doing because I swear I swept my cursor over the damn computer and it just didn't appear as selectable. So you're blocked from doing the common sense task by shit ass game design that makes this room look like three dead ends until you've done arbitrary crap first. So you shut off the steam, click around plainly obvious stuff to replace the air filter, and congratulations! You have now beaten the bunker. No, I'm serious. Game's over. Oh, you still got about half of the story to go, but for all intents and purposes, game's over. You win. You're done. When John tries to turn the air back on, his dumb, clumsy ass falls and he breaks his arm. This leads to a sequence that was laser designed to make me barf, where you use a few button mashing sequences and click and drags to have John drag himself back up to the sick bay, push a bone back in, and set splint and bandage his own arm. This is the only intense sequence in the game because John is crying like a sad puppy the entire time. It's done to convey that John is a man-child, which doesn't factor into the game or story or get developed further anywhere else. But because John didn't turn the air back on, the air pump system explodes and the bunker starts filling up with radiation from the top floors down, forcing John to flee down the emergency exit, which triggers a flashback to when John saw the commissioner seal off said exit. So what do you do now that you're in a brand new area and you need to escape as quickly as possible? First, you click the one and only other door that's in the room. Wait, I didn't edit that. Why did the lighting color change from yellow to blue in the span of a nanosecond? This triggers a flashback to a time John and his mom were fleeing a guy with an axe. Then you have nothing to click but a door that leads back to the war room. This triggers another flashback to a meeting where they announced that the air outside the bunker won't be livable for 20 to 30 years. 20 to 30 years. Sam, can we last that long? Do we have enough food? Gee, I wonder what the game's big twist reveal is going to be! I'd offer a guess, but it's just too damn subtle! Now you've got nowhere to go except a hatch in the floor, so you click it to uncover the hatch, and then you click it again to open it. Then you come to a gate, and you click to open that too. And then you come to another gate, so you click on it, but it won't open, so you click the hatch in the floor because there's nothing else to do, which triggers another flashback to John and his mom fleeing the axe guy. And once you go down that tunnel, you come to another tunnel where literally the only thing you can do is click to walk forward and trigger another flashback. Are you starting to notice anything funny about this game? The entire second half of the game is just you clicking to launch the next cutscene. There is no more exploration of locales. There are no more puzzles. There is no more item collection. You come to a screen. There is one thing to click on. You click on it. And then the story continues! We are stuck doing nothing but watching a crappy movie for an hour, and the movie just pauses every few minutes until you click the continue button! That's what passes for interactivity now! Everything that I kinda liked about the game has dribbled off and died by this point. The visuals have lost their grit, and any immersion I had is dead and buried, because it's clear that John's not in any real danger, and I'm getting pissed that the gameplay has devolved into unpausing the video! To try and pretend that this is still actually a game, there will be button prompts on the screen in mid cutscene where you need to move your cursor over a target and either click in a time limit or mash the button, but I played the game through a second time going out of my way to fail all of these prompts. Only four of them actually kill you, and the worst you get is it sends you back a minute or two. Most of the time the game doesn't give a shit whether you make the timed prompt or how quickly you mash the indicated button. It'll just pause there until you do it. Because damn it, you're here to watch a movie about a guy running through empty hallways, not to test your mind or reflexes or anything. Anyway, the axe man chasing John and his mom is the commissioner, and you have to click two prompts to shoot him before he kills the mom. What's funny is that if you screw up either of these QTEs, the game kills you by bringing up a goofy text box about how that's not how it really happened. So there is no serial killer, intruder, or monster trying to kill John in the present. 
The loud noises and flashes of a masked murderer were all just red herrings. The game's plot is not about a man in isolation grappling with his sanity or having to confront a big evil that's out to get him. It's about a man running away from the air while having flashbacks to when stuff actually happened to him two decades ago. Which brings me to probably my biggest question. Why the hell isn't the game just set during the flashbacks? Most of the game's actual story comes from memories of the bunker falling into disarray and disorder with a killer running loose from 20 years ago. All while nothing the hell happens in the present. Like... Why? You wrote a story about a tense investigation and murder mystery with a tightly claustrophobic setting rich in themes of paranoia, hopelessness, desperation, and survival as resources dwindle, cabin fever and insanity set in, hope slips away as the other bunkers fall into chaos, the inhabitants fall into despair, and people start doing whatever it takes to survive, but instead of actually telling that story, we're relayed at second hand by some ninny whose A-plot is running tech support and trying to find an exit. How does that even happen? What compels you to make a game about a guy gradually remembering an interesting story instead of just telling the interesting story? Did they hit a dead end trying to make a guy roaming his empty house interesting? Or did they think that some guy realizing that repressed memories exist was such a brilliant narrative that it had to take the center stage? Turns out it was perfect that I did this after Hulk 2003. Both of them think that pointing out you forget stuff from childhood is deep psychology. Anyway, John hits another locked door, so you need to get into where the commissioner's body is stashed. And holy shit, an actual puzzle where you have to guess the combination to a keypad. You press the buttons in order of how much blood they have on them. Took me five seconds to figure out. John opens the door, leading to the big reveal. John's mom killed everybody in the bunker with poison gas so that John would have enough food to survive to adulthood and leave the bunker someday. The commissioner caught it on camera and tried to stop her from getting away with it. And inside the cold room are the bodies of everybody that she poisoned. So, awkward question. All those people died at their desks and in the maintenance areas. Did the mom have to go around dragging every single one of the bodies to this freezer one by one up multiple floors? Gotta keep busy somehow, I guess. You need to find the keys and there are two directions you can go. Both somehow lead to keys. And then John starts hallucinating ghosts of all the dead people. Ghosts that do nothing but stand in the distance and stare disapprovingly at him. You click through a vent where John's repressed memories make the final reveal that his mom had him place the poison that killed everyone. It's never made clear if he understood what was going on at the time. So John just found out that his mother is a mass murderer who made him complicit in her crimes and that he indirectly murdered around 50 people and shot an innocent man to death. What is John's reaction to these revelations that ought to shock him to his core? Dull surprise for a few seconds. Psychological horror, everyone. John Jenk edits his way back to the exit where he hallucinates a ghost grabbing at his leg. This button prompt can actually kill you with a cheap fade to black from a single imaginary hand holding your leg to death. Somehow. And then, just to make sure absolutely everyone gets what happened, they flash back to every step of John's mom poisoning people as a test run and her motivation on the off chance that the game's plot wasn't already crystal clear to everyone who was even slightly paying attention. The game ends with you needing to choose whether John leaves the bunker or stays with the imaginary ghost of his dead mom to swiftly die of radiation poisoning. I know, tough choice, right? If you choose to leave, John walks outside and there's a prompt for you to breathe, just like you did at the start of the game when he was born, symbolizing a rebirth and starting a new life. <gasps> and then, odds are good that he died shortly thereafter because the air is probably still irradiated and poison, and he has no survival skills whatsoever, and no consistent access to clean food or water. Ow. Luckily, you can see the alternate ending by just clicking continue from the main menu and then waiting through, I'm not shitting you, a full 11 minutes worth of unskippable cutscenes. Like 10% of the game's total runtime is in this one sequence. And the alternate ending just cuts to an outside shot of the bunker for a few seconds. Thanks, that was totally worth all the effort.
I just don't get this game. In some ways, it's both better and worse than the other FMV games I've done at the same time. The bunker has even less interactivity than Erica and I saw Black Clouds did. At least there you had some slight control over how the game progressed and what happened. At least in Drek, like the long lost American hero, there's a semblance of actual gameplay. Limited and shitty as it is, the bunker just has a few point and click puzzles that take about two seconds to figure out, and then the entire second half of the game is just clicking the one thing that's available to click to advance to the next rigid, predetermined, unskippable cutscene. There's no game in this game! The bunker is probably meant more as a narrative experience, but what is the point of this narrative? The psychological isolation aspects are dropped midway through, they don't really focus on the drive to survive or the indomitableness of the human spirit or whatever, and they don't really play up the mother all that much to make it a tale of how far a parent will go for their child. It's not even really John being haunted by the ghosts of his past since he doesn't realize he killed everyone till near the end, at which point he has no reaction to it, and it's not a belated coming of age story for a man-child because, frankly, John is barely a character. Staging the murder mystery plot as a series of flashbacks was a huge mistake as it adds a disconnect with the player. Why am I supposed to care about a killer that's been dead for 20 years, has no bearing on the present, and isn't a threat to me? And if the core of the story is John overcoming his personal fears and demons, then again, it's kind of dropped midway through when John doesn't hesitate when it's time to bail out of the bunker. The game's got nothing but smoke and mirrors to try and trick you into thinking more's going on than a guy fixing his house and then leaving. The game barely holds up for one playthrough, let alone multiple, so I'm just left asking, what is the point of this game? Oh, it's a piss-easy platinum trophy. Yeah, that'll do. I don't need the toilet right now. <laughs>